Okay, um, I'm not sure if I shared this before, so I'm just going to begin here. So once again, I am reading the text called Alchemy. It is the second book in the Beyond the Known series penned by Paul Selig. So as I'm reading that text, um, messages are coming through for me, um, and I'm sharing them here. So this is pertaining to the text. When you claim them in the upper room, you are remembering them as they truly are, not who they have pretended to be, acted as if, as acted as in human experience. Okay. You see them warring, arguing, fighting, and see through the human roles. You see beyond the human identity claims to the perfect, changeless Christ unawakened. You see the Christ waiting to be birthed as the fullness of expression in human form. You are remembering them in truth as they are of God, as God in all state of, as God in a state of perfection. Renown equals remembered. The word itself, and this is a quote from the book, the word itself is the action of the creator articulated in all things, in all humanity. In anything that may express, end quote. The word made flesh, and this is a quote also, the word made flesh is the realignment of form to what has always been, end quote. The process of death and resurrection. And another quote from the book, which I have a slight change was made for me. Each soul progresses through the opportunities it creates for itself and for itself is in parentheses that was not in the original text many of you choose to learn your lessons through challenge end quote i know who you are remembers the perfect creation of god made in like image in form i remember you as the perfection that god made no matter who you believe yourself to be no matter what mask you wear today i see you i remember the you capital y who is changeless, I know you in your perfection. As we witness the truth of others, we claim, and we is capitalized, claim the truth, capital T, of us, capital U, for all, capital A. See Christ in every brother, sister. See Christ patient and observing while the human mucks about. Christ is there, waiting for the perfect time to be born into the human when the human is ready, the Christ becomes, capital B, as I am. I am as capitalized. About war. When you know, realize, in parentheses, the divine as the soldier, as the battlefield, both are transformed by non-judgment. Non-judgment releases the attachment to good, bad, right, wrong, and the history you associate with them. Judge not, lest ye be not judged. See all as holy, and you know yourself in truth. Sorry. For you are also holy. See all as perfectly purposeful, and you know yourself as perfectly purposeful. The divine as all that you see, all that you feel means you are not in the wrong and releases you to be as you were created. Perfect. Without criticism or crucifixion of self, you are free to be the Christ, which is the truth of you. When the guilt and shame are gone, you are free to choose anew. No longer holding against you choices made in history. Without history and all of its values, its values in quote, quotation marks, you are free to be the creation of God at the highest level. History carries the energies which seem to have trapped you in a cycle of behavior based in fear and recognized as guilt, shame, lack, inadequacy. Who are you without these stories? You are the Christ, the only begotten of the Father. 
you are all, capital A, that child, and you, capital Y, are one, capital O, in peace and love. There is more. Then a bit later, I was shown. The you created in the image of God has no form, form in quotation marks, is physicality. So the you created in the image of God has no form in physicality. Physicality is the material realm, be it this universe or other. Christ is your true state. The Christ may choose to have an experience which is best accomplished by taking on form or assuming an identity which not so closely resembles the Christ. As the human, you take on or assume identity through allowance or acceptance of layers, layers of energies which become the human body, personality, vices, beliefs, etc. Experience after experience layers atop the last and continue continues if not interrupted. Teachings such as these are divine interrupters, having the potential to shake loose the accumulated layers that we may also call distortions. These layers or distortions influence all aspects of your human experience until a disruption occurs. The disruption can come in any form. They can be teachings, they can be trauma, they can be love. You choose the form based on your receptivity. The more love you realize for you, the more appreciation you have for you, the more loving the disruption whose only intention is to call your attention to the truth of you. I'm going to read that again. The disruption can come in any form. Form. They can be teachings. They can be trauma. They can be love. You choose the form based on your receptivity. The more love you realize, realize for you, the more appreciation you have for you, the more loving the disruption whose only intention is to call your attention to the truth of you. Christ is always present, literally in presence. The layers of distortion or distraction from presence influence your participation in history or future, which can only be in the mind on the self of the self made to protect you from fear and also created and feeds fear simultaneously. Let me look at that just one second. Okay, so I didn't I didn't catch that when I reread it after I wrote it. Um but it's interesting because it, it actually says that. It says um the layers of distortion or distraction from presence influence your participation in history or future, which can only be in the mind of the self made to protect you from fear and also creates and feeds fear simultaneously. Self made. And in this case, self is small s. Okay. In presence, Christ lives as you in past or history, or future. You call upon the God you feel you need for protection due to the sense of separation found in past or future. Christ is now and can be in no other time because time, past, future are not real and only exist in the mind. Let me read that again. In presence, Christ lives as you in past, which history is in parentheses, or future. You call upon the God you feel you need for protection due to the sense of separation 
found in past or future. Christ is now and can be in no other time because time, past, future are not real and only exist in the mind. Okay, so as I read that, what that's saying is you call, okay, you call upon the God so that you feel you need for protection. And that's going to be what people call the ego, okay? So we call upon the one that can, that is with us or present or driving the car when our minds are focused on past or future, a time which is not real, does not exist. The only thing that is real is the now. And once the now is no longer the now, it's no longer real. Why? Because now it has been altered through perception. Okay? So that's, that's a whole other thing we're not going to get into right now. Okay, and it continues. <laughs> okay, this is about the ego construct, which is great because it's kind of leading into this. The ego construct as a blessing. As the teachings are received, my ego catches, and this is talking about me as the human example, okay? As the teachings are received, my ego catches on edges that cause a questioning to ensue. This questioning allows for more subtle truths to come through, come forth. These subtleties shed more of the layers of distortion the ego's resistance to absolute acceptance allows for more focus upon the areas of resistance as long as you are aware that the resistance is occurring. To you, it is a nagging, something about this I can't let go. When the ego is resisting the teaching and you are without judgment, you question, how is this so? Why do they say, instead of denying God, you are asking God to show itself to you? The ego blesses the one with, the ego blesses the one with the curiosity, which leads the one to discovery and inevitably to truth. Once you see it in me, it is only a matter of time until you know it as you. Now, this is, this was this quote I quoted in a previous video, and this time it has been slightly altered. As it was given to me before, it was once you see it in me, it's only a matter of time before, until, or before you see it in you. And that was kind of the teachings of Jesus with the, if you've seen me, you have seen the father also. Okay. So he taught it that way so that we could, through discovery, understand, come to know that we are also that. But at that time, you know, he was not, he wouldn't have been able to just come out and say that to people. They would have never been receptive to it. Uh, never is a big word, but few, even fewer would have been receptive to it. Thank you. Okay. So this time, this, this quote was given to me in this way, until or before. Before is in parentheses. Okay, and now I'm understanding, I'm getting the image why before is in parentheses. Because, because Jesus stated in many different ways that I, those who, one who comes, okay, before me, and he says, I come before you. I come before you. In other words, I'm making the way for you before. It's not really about time. It is, it is standing in encouragement, support of lifting you. I'm lifting you up. So it's, it's, I come before you because I, I have taken the step that lifts you not because I'm better than you. I have taken the step that lifts you. Okay. So it's only a matter of time before or until you know it as you, but that's why he gave me the before in parentheses. Okay. He, they, 
Okay, so that's the difference. And this time it says, know it as you, instead of see it in, until you see it in you, it, this time they say, until you know it as you. So, which is really interesting because every time, just like it's saying here about these subtleties, you know, the, the text alchemy, it points in the direction. And then if, with all great teachings, I'm hearing with all great teachings, this is what occurs. It points in a direction. If you are truly thirsting for truth, if you are truly thirsting for oneness with God, your receptivity allows for that energy of that text, that transmission, that teaching to come in to permeate every cell within the human form. And it allows for an unraveling, which is the shedding of these distortions, an unraveling of prior beliefs of what what this one, what the Missy calls programming, okay, human programming from everywhere that we're bombarded with and meshed in. So it creates an unraveling on even a deeper level, even though it's saying exactly the same thing. This transmission, this message was given to me in alignment with where I am. So alchemy is really great. It's a great doorway and it opens us up. And I cannot speak highly enough about this body of work by Paul Selig, that it opens up, it opens up the channel for us to tap into our divine self, which speaks to us exactly how we need to be told to understand on the deepest possible level. They say, the guides say, we meet you where, where you are. Thank you. We meet you where you are. So in that text, it's like a blanket, blanket teaching, a generalized teaching. And as you immerse yourself in it, you, we become taught on that specific custom level where we can receive it to the very best of our ability. Now, Back here where they say this questioning allows for more subtle truths to come through. That's where we're at. So they've directed me back to this. Okay. Which, which they had told me these, um, shed more of the layers of distortion, which they say, they said to me earlier, are uncleansed beliefs. So, and that's what this whole teaching is about, is about, um, shedding the layers of everyone else's understanding, belief, construct, to allowing the birth of the new construct, which is, is, should I say it that way? Okay. Which is more in alignment with truth. It's not yet absolute truth, but it is a frequency that is more, mm, which resembles more closely truth. It's hard to articulate, yes. Okay, so that's where I am at this point. I hope this message finds you well and peace and love, may you be blessed. And again, another another shout out to Paul Selig in abs so much gratitude for the work that he's doing, so much gratitude for those giving the messages and all of those who are assisting us at this time and throughout eternity that have been assisting the human race. And I am so grateful and in, in thanks and thanks and thanks. May it be.